Hi, I'm Mr. Meat. In this video, we'll study the behavior of buyers in the markets by taking a close look at demand. We'll cover the factors that are important to demand, which we call demand determinants. We'll also examine the demand curve and its implications on the law of demand. Then we'll look at how different types of changes in demand are reflected by shifts and movements along the demand curve. The first important demand determinant is price. This is described in the Law of Demand, which states, the quantity demanded of a good falls when the price of the good rises and vice versa, holding everything else equal. The second demand determinant is income. Your demand for, say, leisure travel, may decrease significantly if you lose your job. A lower income decreases one's purchasing power, which can lead to a lower demand. A good that fits this description is referred to as a normal good. On the contrary, if the demand of a good is negatively related to income, then the good is called an inferior good. For example, ramen noodles are considered an inferior good because as your income decreases, you may not be able to afford steak meals, and so you substitute the steak meals with ramen noodles. The third demand determinant is the prices of related goods. Say you don't have a preference between Coca-Cola and Pepsi. If the price of Coca-Cola increases, you substitute away from Coca-Cola in favor of Pepsi and hence increase the demand of the latter. We call Coca-Cola and Pepsi substitutes because the price increase of one good leads to an increase in the demand for the other. On the other hand, suppose an increase in the price of peanut butter leads to a decrease in the demand for jelly because you can't afford as much peanut butter and there's no point in having the extra jelly alone. In this case, we call peanut butter and jelly complements. The fourth demand determinant is consumer preference. This one is pretty straightforward. Buyers demand goods according to their tastes. If a consumer's preference changes, then demand changes accordingly. For example, a movement of health diet awareness could change the consumer's tastes and decrease the demand for fast foods. Last but not least, the fifth determinant is consumers' expectations about the future affecting demand today. For example, if consumers expect the future prices to be lower than demand today will decrease. Let's look at some graphs to illustrate the demand of a consumer. We'll start by holding all demand determinants constant except for the price. This graph shows the relationship between quantity demanded on the horizontal axis and the price on the vertical axis. Notice the inverse relationship satisfies the law of demand. As the price comes down, the quantity demanded goes up and vice versa. This downward sloping line is called the demand curve. In the first section, we discussed a few factors that can affect demand. Here, we'll differentiate and categorize these changes into two types. First, movement along the demand curve happens when the price changes. This is illustrated in the graph as the movement from point A to B, or vice versa, on the demand curve D. The lower price, PA, corresponds to a higher quantity demanded, QA, while the higher price, PB, corresponds to the lower quantity demanded, QB. Second, a shift of the demand curve happens when any of the demand determinants change, except for price. For example, we know an increase in income raises the demand for a normal good. In the graph, this is represented as a shift from D to D1. If, however, we have a decrease in consumer preference, then the demand curve would shift to the left from D to D2. In general, the demand curve shows the relationship between price and quantity demanded while holding all other demand determinants constant. If any of these other demand determinants change, then the demand curve shifts. In summary, 
The demand curve is an important piece to the analysis of market forces. We use price and quantity demanded to construct the demand curve. Along with a few demand determinants, we are able to conceptualize the behavior of buyers. If you want to explore these topics in more depth, come visit Chegg where you can see additional topic videos and example problems, or you can ask our Chegg subject matter experts for help on specific problems. Thanks for watching.